when we think about analytics, uh, I think there is a sometimes preconception that is always like a, something that you, you do after, you no? Know? Like you get data, you look at the data, and yes, of course, based on the data, you implement changing. But I think also what you are doing and what you're showing here is that uh, how also some analytics tool that can be more like real time, you know, right. the, right. you know how, how they, and that's what I want to hear from you, how kind of the real time uh, view, yeah. it can be devices, your people, yeah. or uh, they, they are helping, for example, a BMC, you know, to sometimes take the action in the moment, right. as you said, you know, fix the roadblock or maybe, yeah. you know, rearrange things. So I think that would be yeah. interesting for sure to sure. learn from you. Sure, understanding, for example, our scan times, real time, and, make, and, and predicting where can we add more patients. Um, you know, having that uh, predictive analytics is key. Um, we're used to looking at retrospective data in medicine, right? And it's important, of course, for, you know, benchmarking and, and, and things like that. But um, for us, for us to be able to predict how our day is going to look like, for us to be able to predict um, how long our protocols are going to take so that we could increase access and help uh, our technologies is, is key. Yeah, so, so so it's kind of you bring the next level, no? So analytics, but also, you know, real-time workflow tools and, you know, helping you, of course, uh, with that. So I think, you know, that that's good. And how, how are your staff, you know, perceived? Because, again, also that's another problem. Now, when you introduce a lot of data and analytics, yeah. you know, it's kind of like the big brother effect, no? Like... Uh, you, you, you they think you're watching it so yeah. how how you address that or again how you make it you know yeah. the, the right in the right way yeah, for them to it's important to make it part of the conversation and ask the right questions you know what is keeping you from getting to the next patient or what is keeping you from completing this exam timely and so what you're able to do is you know from their responses you match that up with the data that you have and it's eye-opening and it's uh, you might think that there are certain things that they're doing that are potentially helping the workflow, but in reality, it might be creating more delays. Uh, so when you put the two stories together, so you put their side and the data, it's it's really eye opening. So yeah, they're, they're inclusion yeah. and that's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Can I make a comment yeah. about that? I mean, I, that is absolutely our experience. Yeah. We we had a circumstance where one particular exam was just taking longer than we expected, and the first thing the administration did is said their MSK radiologists killing us. Their protocols are too long. Yet they weren't too long. So, but we identified that they actually were longer on the table. So we spoke to the team and said, what's going on here? And they said, well, we're confused. Uh, we understand the ankle, but the foot, we don't know what the coral is. We don't know what an axial is. And we sat and thought about it, thought about it and delayed. And it made every exam longer. So having the analytics gave us the insight that we're able to then direct the appropriate educational effort to and alleviate that problem. Without the analytics, yeah. we never would have known. We're pointing fingers in every direction. And discussions, like on the radiologist side. Who am I to tell a radiologist your protocols? Are well, well they're happy. we're happy to do that. But yeah. we have the data to show, like, why is it taking longer than usual to do a brain or a knee or a shoulder? And how can we reduce that? 